Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about a confidence interval, but specifically we'll, talk, we'll be talking about it for mu. So remember that mu is the population mean, and that's a type of parameter. And today we're not gonna go into an example, but we're gonna talk about generically how do you perform a confidence interval for one population mean. Now remember that throughout the course of these videos and the textbook that's connected to these videos, we do this method called FRED. So FRED stands for formulate the problem, review conditions, execute calculations, and then of course at the end, draw conclusions. So for a confidence interval for the population mean, we're gonna start by formulating the problem. Now, if you remember, that requires you to state first what the population is. So you'll state the group that you want to make an inference on. And remember, that's gonna be the all, whole, or entire group that you're interested in. Then you would state the sample. And when you state a sample, it will be the same type of group that you're gonna state over here, all of the group. But here with the sample, you'll say the size. So how many people did you find? The number of people or trees or whatever it is you're studying. And then it will be the exact same group as you had above. So these things that are underlined, these will be the only two things that change from the statement of the population to the statement of the sample. And then the next thing that you would do would be to state basically your variable of interest. So what are you measuring? What are you interested in? So with this, remember when you're talking about means, you are going to be stating some quantitative variable. And it's important too to remember when it's a quantitative variable, you need to be specific and state what units are you being used to measure that variable. And then at the end, you're gonna essentially put all of this together. You're gonna state your parameter of interest. And for these problems, because it's the population mean, your parameter of interest is going to have the notation mu. And remember, notation just means that symbol we use to represent the parameter. So this is our notation. And it's gonna always start with mu equals mean. So that will never change because we're talking about a population mean. So it's always gonna be mu equals mean. And then after that, you're gonna say the mean of, and it'll be whatever that variable was. So the mean of the variable, so you'll restate that down here. And then after that, at the very end, you will state what your population is. So it'll be the variable and it would be four, and then you'll restate that population that you stated above. So this is the first part for formulate the problem, our F in Fred. The next part we'll talk about reviewing conditions. Now, reviewing conditions is something that's necessary to do because if the conditions are not met, the formulas that I will show you in executing the calculations don't work. So reviewing the conditions requires two things. Essentially, you want your data to be relatively symmetric. So when you look at a box plot or a histogram, you want that data to have kind of that bell-shaped, relatively symmetric on each side and a unimodal peak. Now, you also, though, want to make sure that the number of outliers are appropriate for the sample size. So you won't want to have too many outliers for a small sample size. A bigger sample size can handle more outliers. And it also depends on the extremeness of the outliers when you're reviewing conditions. So if they're really extreme and you have a small sample size, that's probably going to create a problem. However, if it's extreme and you have a really large sample size, probably not that big of a deal. I always tell people to think about it in terms of a teeter-totter. So if you have more weight on one side and only one outlier that's really far out there, it's not going to affect that center or the mean, and so it's probably going to be okay. However, if you don't have a lot of weight, so you have a small sample size, something extreme on the other end is really going to affect it, and that's going to be a problem. So that's reviewing conditions, and we'll look at that more specifically when we get into the examples for calculating a confidence interval for mu. 
The next thing is executing calculations. So in executing calculations, these things have to kind of be done in this order just because of the way that the problem builds. So if you remember when we did a previous confidence interval, the first thing that you need is your point estimate. So essentially this is the value that estimates your population. And here, because we're trying to estimate mu, our point estimate is going to be x bar. Then the next thing you need is something called the confidence level multiplier. And we've talked about that in previous videos, but essentially it's connected to how confident you want to be. Multiplier. So if you want to be 95% confident, that's going to affect the multiplier that you use. And with these confidence intervals, we're actually going to switch to a different distribution, and we'll be talking about the T distribution, and we'll be using T star multipliers. Now, if you don't know what the T star multiplier is, you can look at my video on the T star and the T distribution. Uh, it might have happened before or after you watch this, but if this is something you're unfamiliar with, make sure you check out that video. And then the next thing that you'll need is something called standard error. And for these problems, standard error is s divided by the square root of n. Now if you need the reminder, s is the sample standard deviation. Let's shorten that a little. And remember that n is going to be the sample size. So once you create that quotient, you'll have calculated standard error. And then the next thing that you'll need is margin of error. And the margin of error, which is um, shortened to ME a lot, is going to be your T star times your standard error. So essentially you'll be taking these values and using it to calculate that product or the margin of error. And then the final thing is you put it all together into your confidence interval. So you take x bar and add and subtract your margin of error to get that confidence interval. So in the next part of Fred, we're into the D, which is drawing conclusions. So for drawing conclusions, that's going to be interpreting the confidence interval. And if you remember, when we did this for P, one population proportion, we needed three things, and that's always true. So you'll need to state your confidence level. So that's usually stated in the problem. A pretty common confidence level is 95%. So you'd start by saying something like, we are, and you say how confident you are. And like I said, usually it's 95%, but it can be 80%, 90%, 99%, whatever the problem stated, and whatever confidence level multiplier you use to create the interval. Then you would state your parameter of interest, and that's going to be the definition that you wrote for mu in the F of Fred. And then the very last thing you need since you're interpreting the confidence interval is the confidence interval itself. Now in the next video, we'll start talking about an example or examples for how to actually do this when you have real numbers. So I'll see you there.